The renin aldosterone angiotensin system is the mechanism in your body that facilitates fluid and salt homeostasis. It keeps a perfect balance of fluid and salt to give a constant blood pressure. The key organs involved are the kidneys, the liver and the lungs. The liver creates angiotensinogen, which when exposed to the enzyme renin, which is created by the juxtaglomerular apparatus in the kidneys in response to decreased perfusion or blood pressure, will convert to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is then acted on by angiotensin converting enzyme, which is produced by the surface epithelium of the lungs and the surface epithelium of the kidneys. This angiotensin converting enzyme then converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, and this is where the interesting effects begin. Angiotensin 2 acts all over the body. It increases the sympathetic tone, or the fight or flight response, increases the kidney's tubular absorption of sodium and chloride, causing the water in the nephrons and kidney to re-enter the main blood vessels, rather than being urinated out, thus improving blood pressure. It stimulates the aldosterone production, which in turn also promotes sodium reabsorption and therefore water retention improving blood pressure. Angiotensin 2 produces marked vasoconstriction in arterioles, thus increasing blood pressure too. Finally, it acts to increase antidiuretic hormone secretion, which is also known as vasopressin. Vasopressin is secreted by the posterior pituitary. It is also a vasoconstrictor, but its other role is to act in the collecting ducts of the nephrons in the kidney to promote water reabsorption. All of these factors improve the blood pressure, and if you remember the poorly perfused juxtaglomerular apparatus in the kidney that was creating all that renin, well, suddenly it's not so underperfused anymore. This reduces the production of renin itself, which therefore reduces the stimulation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, thus giving us the perfect way to maintain our blood pressure at the right level. Of course, the system can malfunction, and that's why we need drugs that act at different stages of this system to reduce blood pressure. But that is for a later video. Let's recap. So renin is made in the juxtaglomerular apparatus. It's stimulated by raised sympathetic tone, falling plasma volume in the blood, and prostaglandins like PGE2. Angiotensin 2 also increases the tone in the efferent glomerular arteriole. This leads to an increased filtration fraction and increases sodium reabsorption. Aldosterone release is also potentiated by hyperkalemia. This acts in the distal tubule and causes sodium reabsorption that then facilitates water reabsorption. Antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin causes passive absorption of water from the collecting ducts, concentrating the urine so it holds on to water for the body. Surgical stimulus can also cause ADH secretion. Another one to be aware of is atrial natriuretic peptide that increases sodium loss by increasing glomerular filtration rate and blocking sodium reabsorption from the proximal collecting duct. It's important to realise that all positive stimulation of the renin and aldosterone angiotensin system can increase blood pressure. The basic mechanism by which this happens is via water reabsorption and vasoconstriction. This all very nicely leads to homeostasis and normal blood pressure.